Hello, hello. Hola, 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 amigos, amigas. Welcome to Lima, Peru. Welcome, welcome to the capital of this beautiful country. Friends and foodies from all over the world. Thank you so, so much for coming today. I am so happy to have you. And also something very special. I know today we are being transmitted live on the Hago platform in Facebook. So thanks a lot for coming today to this virtual event where we're going to learn to cook another Peruvian dish, another of these delicious local uh, dishes that have lots of history involved in them. Each one of the Peruvian dishes is conformed not just by beautiful local products and sometimes international products, also local cooking techniques and international cooking techniques. It's a blend, it's a cultural blend as we all are. So please feel welcome. You are now in my house in Lima, Peru. My name is Vanessa Vasquez. I am your Lima City Tour Guide, and we're going to, to cook today carapulcra. Carapulcra is one of those old dishes, like dishes that have been here before the coming of the conquistadors, but that the way we are serving it now, it also is connected with the many influences from all over the world. So let me say hi to all the people joining today. Thank you so much, by the way, for coming. Hola, Joe, Jim. Hello, Adrian, Robin. Hola, Robin. Hello, hello, amigo. Oh, no worries, Robin. I'm so happy you are here, at least at the beginning. Elise, Ken, Caitlin, Chris. Hola, hola, amigos. Catherine, Maria. Oh, hello, Tapio. Hi, Toby Dolly. Hello, amiga. TJ, Chris. Thanks for coming to Lima. And today we're going to have the chance of cooking together this carapulcra. Um, also, as most of you know, I have a YouTube channel of my own as well. And at the end of this event, I will be sharing the full uh, event there in my YouTube channel so you can see it from beginning to end. And you're going to be able there also to take notes if there's something you miss to, to uh, let's say, to put uh, in your list of, you know, that maybe you are making in this moment. So um, also I am writing a book, a cookbook uh, that I'm giving as a gift to all my sponsors. There is a, a very interesting form to support the guys here. It's called the Sponsorship Program. I am writing two books. And actually, if you become my sponsor, which is just for a $10 fee uh, monthly, uh, you can get access to my two books that I am now writing and improving every month. So this is just a little something from me to my friends that are helping uh, me to, to create this, this channel and the content in it. So, um, well, also, as I said before, we are here uh, being transmitted, not just in our platform of Hago, also in YouTube. So I am also here connected with the YouTube next to me. So if you have a question and you're live in YouTube, uh, you can also mention your questions over here. So, uh, Dolly, we are cooking carapulcra. Carapulcra is an old Peruvian dish that has origin in pre-Hispanic times. So we are going also to go in detail about the history of carapulcra, as always, during the time of the, uh, the cooking, the cooking of our meal. But first of all, I would like to go on the details on how we are doing also the step-by-step -step process. So I am putting on a pan. This is just, you know, a pan uh, that uh, has only oil. Uh, and we are heating up the oil because we are going to now use this pork. I bought uh, three quarters of a kilogram of pork. Uh, I am planning this to be uh, a meal for six person. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the ingredients that you're going to see I use today, I will be using today, uh, they are, uh, they actually, you know, like a gain size, like quite easy, especially 
one of the ingredients, which is dehydrated potato. You can replace the potato, the dehydrated potato for regular potato. I will be explaining this also later. So um, we're going to first how to fry our pork, okay? So as I said before, we are going to put the pork, a uh, cerdo, I would call it in Spanish, actually in my classes, uh, cooking classes and historic tours, and also lectures from home, we learn a lot about Spanish. So we're going to put the cerdo in the pan, and we're going just to fry it superficially, okay? not going to be a full fry. You gotta be careful, please, when you are doing this because you know already that at the contact of water, you're going to have a lots of, you know, oil splashing around. You gotta be careful, please. In a moment, I will be checking on your questions. Just want to add my pieces of pork first. And we're going to lower a bit the temperature of the kitchen. Okay. So remember, I am using for this recipe first pork. Okay. And carapulca is one of those dishes that has evolved so 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 much that there are different variants of this dish. Carapulcra. One of the most famous carapulcras we have in Peru is the one from the south, the carapulcra chinchana, from Chincha, where there is a large Afro-Peruvian community. Okay, so now that the, um, it's not splashing so much the oil, I am getting, making closer the camera so you can see how we are sealing superficially we say that sellar sealing frying superficially the pig the pork okay it's going to be just for a little while but we have to be patient we have uh, lower the temperature of the uh, pan so let me see how is who is coming hola bill Mary Lou, hola amiga, hello, como estas? Thanks for coming amiga, gracias. Thanks for making it to today's event. Um, we are, by the way, a little bit festive because not just Christmas is around the country, uh, the corner, sorry, <laughs> uh, but I wanted to talk about the country. Also, um, yesterday we had a, a political situation which was very interesting. Our president, decided to uh, do a self-cook. That was just yesterday, oh, sorry, two days ago. And, uh, well, President Castillo, uh, he's no longer president now because of his self-cook that he did just two days ago, uh, but was completely rejected by the military forces. And of course, by the Congress, he decided to close the Congress uh, because he's being investigated for lots of um, criminal cases connected to him and his closest circle. So, um, well, now he is uh, in his way to prison. Many Peruvians, not everybody, to be very honest, but many Peruvians are quite happy with this uh, situation. It's one problem less. So that's why also I'm celebrating today a bit. I don't know uh, if, you know, the, the good news will continue the rest of the year. But it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it goes. So we have already, as you can see, right superficially, the pork. Okay, amigos? So we're going now to move the pig all the pork, the cerdo, and we're going to put it in a bowl, which I already have here. 
right? We're going to put this pork here. So my classes are always very, very practical, amigos. I don't do really like a lots of, you know, like um, preliminary, let's say, uh, sort of like a, a preparation of my classes because with these classes, you can really learn from beginning to end the whole process. It's like if, for example, Granny would be with you, teaching you paso a paso, step by step, every every dish. And if you are new or in, in the cooking, let's say, um, process, I want to teach you the details. And we also use a lot of, you know, a handful of this, a pinch of this, a little bit of this, because that's the way how it always used to be. Well, so we're going to move now the pork and let me show you what is the resulting of, of this, okay? So look at the little like juice that has come in the bottom of the, uh, can you see it? This juice that has come in the bottom of the pan. This is the resulting of the fat of the uh, pork with the oil. So we are going to be using this, okay? This is very important part of our uh, flavor, right? So we're going to put it back in the uh, in the pan, in the fire. And by the way, I will also check my amigos in the uh, YouTube in case there is any question. Well, thank you so much, by the way, for all your participations. Uh, and now we're going to continue with the process. So we have to now add this. Uh, this is cebolla roja, uh, red onion, purple color onion. For those that know my channel and have been before in my channel, uh, know that onions are a very important part of all our cuisines, uh, the flavor of our cuisine. Do you put some oil in the bottom of the pan? Joe, uh, what I did when I was, you know, like preparing the first part of this, uh, let's say, process of the carapulcra, I put oil, I heat it up a little bit, and then I put the pieces of the pork. So what is there here is just the oil with, you know, the flavor of the uh, pork. So now, one onion, this is one, but I chose a big one. One onion, red onion, chopped in little cubes. And we're going now to, uh, to fry it. Okay, so we're going to put this again closer. Huh? I hope this is clear, Joe. Let me know if there's any question. And you know already that later you can come to my YouTube channel, Adventurous Travel Guide, where you can see this recipe from beginning to end and take notes and repeat it or later also cook it with your friends at home, you know, one day if you want to do something original. So we have here first the onion. This is the red onion, okay? We're going to add also in a moment the flavors. Cumin, for example, very important in our cuisine. The base of the flavor of the Creole food. We have to be patient with this. We have to caramelize the onion with patience. You know when this onion is ready? When there is no more purple in the onion. Oh, that's why we also like to use the red onion. Because the, in the way how we know when it's ready is when there's no more purple in, in it. 
it turns all white. We have to move it. For this type of dishes, you need to be right next to the pan. In that way, it doesn't, it will not burn. Also, you have to keep moving, 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 because the bottom part will do first. And if you are not moving, you will have a not well and uniform cooked onion. So by the way, if you are new to my channel, I would like to know, first of all, if anyone is new to my channel, because, well, I want to give you a proper welcome. <laughs> you can also follow my channel. There is a button that says follow. I not just do cooking classes. I also do historic uh, talks from my home, uh, city tours. I am a, a tour guide. Oh, la Catherine. Oh, I'm so happy you are new to my channel. I really hope you enjoy my content. You have to come to visit me often. I do new tours, like complete different tours all the time. I, I don't like to repeat tours. So every time you're going to see one of my tours there, there's going to be something new to see. Okay. Oh, Caroline, thank you. Thanks for coming. Gracias, gracias. Oh, Bill, thanks for coming. I really hope you enjoy what's here being prepared for you all. Um, if you love cooking well i'm sure you're going to enjoy a lot this channel <laughs> mar gracias gracias for coming for the first time please stay and um, come follow my my next tours are going to be all about christmas by the way i have a big christmas season so we're going also to do something more which is adding coming okay amigos we're going to add cominos Comino in Spanish. So, more or less, one spoon of cumin. Do you use cumin in your, in your, uh, let's say, uh, recipes? I know not everybody is into too much spice, but if you want to do it like the Peruvian way, you have to do it with cumin. And we have also another important ingredient this is ajo garlic the garlic gives a really nice flavor to our dishes that more or less like this maybe two little spoons of garlic okay i have put like double of that here in this big uh, spoon i have and we're going to right so we put the garlic at the end because uh, the garlic cooks faster than the onion. Uh, so you don't want your garlic to be burned and your onion to be ready. No, no, no. You want everything to be made at the same time uh, properly. Mm -hmm. We Peruvians always have uh, blended onions. Uh, in our in our fridge so we're going to move just a little bit again mm -hmm. oh Mary Lou gracias gracias my dear thank you amiga Mary Lou is one of my friends that has been with me since almost the beginning Maple also is another good friend that has been here with me since the beginning uh, when I decided to cook here for for my friends in Hago. What is this dish? Uh, AB, the name of this dish is carapulcra. Carapulcra. Uh, and in a moment, when we're going to have everything here cooking, because you know there's a process, a cooking process that we have to follow in detail. Uh, I will tell you the history of the carapulcra. Okay? So no worries. Now we're going to go with the next important. Uh, dish, which is, oh, sorry, uh, ingredient, which is the jello chili paste. Uh, in North America, you can find this as, a, well, in the, sorry, um, Hispanic bodegas. We're going to add like more or less three spoons, to, or let's say oh, three little spoons, if it's really like 
something too strong for you, the chili. This is not hot chili. This is just flavorful. So we're going to add three of them. Okay. Uh -huh. Going to give it a, a quick move here. We have to lower a little bit the heat in the pan so in that way it will not burn. We don't want this to be burned. We want this to be delicious, not like a smoke flavor. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, it's like my grandmother used to take hours in the kitchen and I didn't understand why she spent so much time in the kitchen because you know, some of the things I could really make like so fast, like bam, 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 everything together inside. But she said, no, 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 everything has an order. And it is meant this order to enhance the flavor of certain products. There are things that need to be cooked for more to liberate, to free the smell. Okay. In a moment, I'm going to get closer to, to see uh your comments amigos see because uh, i am just adding things i don't want anything to burn or to overcook and i will check on the questions so we have here another cream this is also something you can find in the hispanic bodegas this is the uh, sort of like a, a cream of red chili like a paprika paprika uh cream Hispanic bodegas, or also you can find this on uh, Amazon. I have friends from other parts of the world that said, Amazon can bring me uh, uh, this to my home. But yes, let me tell you that sometimes can be expensive. But if you will buy something like this, for example, the yellow chili or the um, uh, ají colorado or panca chili, the red one, um try to buy a big jar let's say put in the ref in the fridge it will last for long it will last for long and also you can do lots of peruvian dishes with those ingredients lots of peruvian dishes huh? this is the base of the peruvian cuisine so look what we are doing here we are integrating everything We are going also to add a little bit of oregano. Just a little bit. Let me use my spoon. Uh -huh. Okay. A little bit of oregano. Mm -hmm. Omar, really? Maple recommended me to you. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so happy Maple is a lovely, lovely, lovely lady. We've been friends for long. Thank you. I, if Maple, you are there, thank you. Do we get some samples of the? Yes, of course, Dorley. I will virtually taste it for you. What do you think about that? Even better. <laughs> So now we're going to add the pork. Remember, we have already fried superficially. It's not really completely ready. Uh, superficially, the pork. So look how the paste is. Look at the paste. And you see that this is the base of the flavor. This is the base of the flavor. Okay. Mm. It's not too dry. <laughs> it's it's not dry it's like it's a paste really that you have made here huh? and now we're going to add the pork look at this we're going to add the pork that we have fried at the beginning okay huh <coughs> And we're going to mix. We're integrating everything. One day, I hope, it will be invented the device that will allow us to smell virtually the smells 
of a video or a live tour. <laughs> that would be really fantastic. But you can imagine, no, the flavor, the smell with the garlic, with the onion, with the chilies. So we are integrating everything here. And we are going now to continue with the next ingredient, which is very important. This is the papa seca. Papa is potato, seco, dry. So this is a dehydrated potato that is very typical in Peru. We use it in many different dishes and it has pre-Hispanic origin. But if, of course, you don't have this product at home, you can use regular potato, white potato. Okay, so I am just doing this to give you an idea of the traditional form, the flavor. But uh, if you cannot find dehydrated potato, of course, uh, because it's too regional the, um, product, please use white potato and chop in little pieces, right, in this uh, mix, okay? So we are... Adding the dehydrated potato. Dehydrated potato, uh, uh, when you when you buy it in the market, you have to hydrate it for at least one hour before using it. Okay, it's very important to hydrate it. Uh, so I suck it in water for one hour, then rinse the water, let it dry a little bit for our event. Okay. But it's not ready. Oh, it's just dehydrated potato, so it's going to be cooked here. So um, now we're going to add water. Okay. What's more difficult, stirring the dish or holding the game? <laughs> well, um, I think this is the most difficult part, Ollie. <laughs> so especially when you are cooking for many people, right? We are going to add water. Okay. Um, usually. You add, first of all, water, like a cold water, but I have boiled water because I want this to be a little bit more fast. I want to help in the cooking of this dish a little bit because we are live, right? Um, and I want it to be the fastest possible. So as you can see, we are covering with water. So this will be because you're going to do it with time at home. You're going to cook to cover not completely the pan. Probably we're going to be needing to add more later because the potato, like uh, it so absorbs water and gains size. This is a really uh, a great dish for, for example, if you're having a party and you want many people to eat and you don't have a big budget. <laughs> we use this the uh, recipe if we have people coming over and we don't have really a big that budget. Uh, because you know it multiplies its size right so probably this is going to be really for more more than six person but that is okay because we like to eat this a lot and we're going to be eating this maybe tomorrow <laughs> again <laughs> so we're going also to add a little bit of salt let me also check on the salt I hope you are having a fun time with me. By the way, amigos, if you're just joining, we are cooking another Peruvian recipe. I always do these cooking shows. Don't repeat. I never repeat the cooking classes because we have we are blessed. We have so many wonderful dishes. I will be adding two spoons of salt preliminarily, and later I will be adding a little bit more to check, correcting, of course because at the end we always correct. And we're going to heat up the temperature um, of the pan and we're going to cup. Okay, so this is how it looks for now. We're going to be adding definitely a little bit more of water in a little while. So let me tell you a little bit of the history of this dish because probably you want to know how this dish was invented and also i think this is a good time for answering some questions if you want to also know more about uh, i don't know lima um well this is a good time to talk about 
the, the history of the city. So, um, well, once again, my name is Vanessa Vasquez. If you are new to this channel, to this uh, cooking show, um, I do all kinds of events from Lima live. Um, I do regular city tours like many of my colleagues do because I am an official tour guide. That's actually my job. I am not a chef, <laughs> but um, my grandmother, she was not a chef as well, but she was a great cook. And this show is inspired in the uh, recipes of my grandmother. Um, my grandmother had uh, for us, she wanted to give us, and also she thought one day to publish a cookbook. Um, and, and she has these many, many notebooks with lots of different recipes that she was able to recollect uh, from different people, from, from her own experience. So this is the information I am giving you now, uh, the recipes of my grandmother. Um, so, well, Peruvian cuisine, there's really nothing like uh, so strict about Peruvian cuisine. We are all the time adding new elements to our cuisine. We are very versatile. Peruvians uh, embrace uh, influences. We are always happy to receive um, something from, you know, North America, Asia, Africa. Uh, and the proof of that is our cuisine. Um, so carapulcra is a dish that has origin in the pre-Hispanic times. It's a dish that, uh, of course, it was not named carapulcra originally. Uh, uh, probably its name was calapurca, calapurca. And calapurca comes from Aymara. Aymara is a language that is nowadays spoken around the Titicaca Lake area in the Peruvian side. Uh, and in Bolivia, around the Titicaca area of the Bolivian side and in many other sections of, uh, of the country. Uh, actually, have you seen the tours of my friend Renan in Bolivia? They are really wonderful. Um, so the people of, uh, for example, La Paz in, in Bolivia, they have Aymara uh, culture and tradition. So it seems that Calapurca comes from, um, first of all, the Aymara tradition. And what does Cala Purca means? Uh, well, seems that is related with something like about cooking over stones. Cala Purca means cooking over hot stones. Uh, so probably hot stones were put in some type of containers and some type of uh, soup made from a potato, uh, from this dehydrated potato, was made. But uh, instead of pork, we have used pork today, right? Instead of pork, um, these people, our ancestors from the Andes, used the meat of llama and alpaca. Also, oh, remember, these are the endemic uh, products of Peru. So llama and alpaca. Um, actually, I did a, a, a event about a, a dish made from dehydrated uh, alpaca meat. Uh, you can see it also in my YouTube channel. Um, so, well, when the Spanish came, the conquistadors came, they introduced lots of different products, unique techniques to, to Europe. And with the Spaniards, we had the African influence. And with the Africans, we had the uh, also the cooking techniques uh, that they introduced. Remember that uh, the reason the African influence came is because we had a slavery. There was a slavery in Peru. And uh, many of the Africans who came to Peru back in the 16th, 17th, 18th century, which were forced to work in plantations, they were given the worst treatment you can imagine, uh, they were usually given the leftovers to eat. They had to eat well. That's why they were given, you know, the liver and heart and brain and tongue, like any parts that were not of the animal, right, of the beef or the chicken, any parts that the masters didn't use or didn't sold because many of these masters uh, made money from, you know, like uh, selling products at the markets, you know, their slaves sold the products for them, of course. And the slaves were given to eat the leftovers. So that's how many of our traditional dishes emerge because they came from uh, the survival also for the idea of survival and also with the intention 
of, um, you know, like making the dishes, you know, with this very strong flavored meats, uh, more uh, delicious, more succulent. Also, that's how I, our food also is so tasty and it has lots of, you know, like cumin and, and uh, pepper and salt and, and onion and garlic because we wanted also to make the flavors to be very delicious. So I will do a little hold on my, the story because I want to say hi to the people that are just joining. I'm seeing also people joining. Are they in your cookbook? Yes, Catherine, all my uh, past, um, let's say, uh, events, uh, cooking events are in my cookbook. And um, also my cookbook has the links to each one of the videos that are connected to the recipes that are there. So um, I am giving this cookbook as a present to my sponsors uh, um, as a way to say thanks to, to you all. So what can you use instead of uh, the pastes? Uh, I have paprika, said to us, Dolly, I think paprika will work also. Try to hydrate a little bit more the paprika to make it a little bit more, you know, consistent, like a little paste. Um, and well, the, the yellow chili, it ga gives a really good flavor, but, um, uh, if you cannot find it, well, you can, you can go also only with the paprika, uh, if, if it's the case, no? Um, of course, that if you can find these other ingredients, I really encourage you to, to buy those because you're going to see, you know, that the flavors will, who you no know, go really to the stars. So uh, it's going to be very intense and very, very delicious. Hola, Aaron. Hello. Thanks for coming. Hola, hola. MB, hello. I can use it. Oh, yes, of course. If it's not possible, you know, it's not possible. But I don't want this to stop you to try Peruvian cuisine, Dolly. Please, please, please try try to adapt as much as you can the dishes. I realized recently that I I am celiac that I cannot have gluten. So it, it sounds like wow. Bueno, it's just you know like a uh, wheat, but no, it is it really like wheat is hidden in in many many different products. So I am also learning to to um to eat again. So, but they import they are important for the texture. Um, you're going to see at the end, yes, that the texture, you know, I mean, of the paste, but at the end, really the flavor is, is here, right? Uh, so you're going to see until the very end, you know, how the result is as, and how the, the, um, the presentation should be. Is this a dish very spicy? No, no, AB, because, um, these two, uh, that I've been using in the beginning, the yellow chili paste and the uh, ají colorado, the red chili paste, which are from, uh, this one is sort of like a paprika. Um, they are not hot. They are just flavorful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to also check on how this is going. It is still in it some time. So the amount of time you're going to be leaving this to cook is about 25 minutes, which it gives me time also to tell you a little bit of the story uh, of, the, uh, of the dish. And also, does potatoes have gluten? Catherine, no. Gluten is on wheat, is on barley, you know, so I cannot drink beer, for example. Uh, beer, I cannot drink any more beer. But wine, yes. Um, but I have to also look on the labels to see if something has traces of gluten. Uh, soy doesn't have gluten, but sometimes it's contaminated with gluten. Also, uh, new things that I have to learn. <laughs> and maybe I'm going to be doing events just for people with gluten problems. <laughs> so, um, well... I want to also to tell you something about the, the carapulcra, no? which is a dish that is considered a, a, a very humble dish. It's a dish that is served, let's say, in, in family events when you have, you know, these many people coming over and you cannot, you know, like uh, spend a lot of money in a nice dinner or lunch for everybody. So you do carapulcra because it's tasty and it's also very cheap. Um, for example, the uh, three quarters of kilogram of pork that I bought at the market, that is the most expensive ingredient, cost me 20 soles. Uh, one US dollars is almost four soles in this moment. So just to give an idea of how much the price for a meal like this one will be for a local. So that is the most expensive 
uh, product that you're going to be using. Then you're going to be using the potato, the dehydrated potato. And we're going also to be adding in a moment uh, a little bit more ingredients. So you're going to see how this goes, right? So um, we have to add this. Mm. So what is this? What do you think is this? Mm -hmm. oh, delicious. Yes, yeah, muy bien, Catherine. Wine, yes. And of course, it's not, you know, like uh, any other thing because I can drink wine. So it's gluten free. <laughs> but this is wine that is uh, sweet. This is sweet wine. Okay, we Peruvians love sweet wine. It doesn't matter, of course, that if you use sweet or you use like a dry wine, you can use any wine, no, no worries. Um, but we Peruvians love sweet wine. We love sweet wine. And that's why maybe our wine is not so like a rentable to be exported because most people don't like sweet wine. It's like a dessert wine. Uh, so I will be using this wine also for in, inside. Now we're going to check. Oh, look at this. Let me make you closer to look at this. So look how we are also seeing the, uh, the evolution of this dish. The potato is gaining size, right? We are moving. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no, my cell phone almost gone. <laughs> it's drunken already, my <laughs> my tripod. I think I have to get a new one because this one here is not really to be trusted. Let me just put you in the good angle. I hope this one doesn't turn down again. Oh no. Okay, I think it's better now. So. Let me just move this here. We have the potatoes gaining uh, size, okay? So we are moving the bottom part top because we don't want the bottom of the pan or the bottom uh, like a section of the food to burn, see? And now we're going to add the wine. How much of the wine? Well, uh, to be honest, it has to be less than the half of a, of a cup. So let me check. Remember that there's really nothing like written on a stone about this dish. Okay, we're going to finish this. So I would say a little bit less than half a cup of a wine okay red wine okay we're going to cover a little bit again mm -hmm. so that was very close with my gimbal <laughs> i feel like cat woman um <laughs> so i don't know how how i saw it coming um so let me also put well my gimbal here so can you substitute grape juice for wine? Well, um, I don't know if the resulting will be the same, but to be honest, Catherine, um, the idea of adding the wine is really to have the flavor of the grape because the alcohol evaporates. The alcohol evaporates completely. So I think it makes sense to, to try to do it like that. Mm-hmm. So try with the grape juice if it's better for you. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the wine? Yo, good question. Um, in the markets in Peru, uh, I'm sure you don't have this in, you know, maybe in Europe or in North America. So in the markets of Peru, there are many stalls, right, in the market. And there is always one stall that is called Especeria. Especia is the spices. So that person in that stall only offer spices. You know, offer this, this, this. It's very easy. So um, one of these spices that we use a lot in our dishes is wine. 
right? So, for example, this morning I went to the to the stall uh, of this uh, my my vendor that I always visit, and I asked him if he had wine, and he said, "Okay, how much wine?" And I said, "I just want half a cup of wine." So he measured the wine. He just it was an artisanal bottle of wine, like red wine. Also, he you know I put like a measure, you know put in a little plastic bag and gave it to me. So that's how we do it. It's very simple. Uh, therefore, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it is really one of the, the things that is very, very interesting about the Peruvian cuisine is that uh, we really don't follow too much on the, you know, like brands. Um, because, well, at the end, we say like when everything gets cooked, like, you know, the best stays. So, um well, let me also continue a little bit with the story of the Carapulcra. So Carapulcra is connected with the Afro-Peruvian tradition. Um, there are different ways also to accompany the Carapulcra. Carapulcra usually is served with rice and yoka, boiled yoka. Yeah, can you notice like how much, how, how many different type of carbs we are putting in one same dish? <laughs> So we are putting rice, the potato, which is already in there, you know, and the yoka, the cassava, right? Or mandioc. Uh, so it's really a lot. We love to eat a lot of carbs. Um, is it good for us? Maybe not. Maybe not. Especially because now we are not as active as we used to be. So, uh well, if you wish to present the dish in the traditional way, like many Peruvians do, you can present it with white rice and boiled yoka or boiled cassava. But because I'm trying to do it a little bit more like a not dietitian style, but also a little bit less carb, we're going to serve it with the rice on it. We're going to choose just, you know, one of the two carbs. So, but is Greek wine, yo, it was... You know, red wine, sweet, the one I use. Red wine, sweet. Uh, but you can use red wine of your taste, of your taste. My suggestion using sangria as a sweet wine. Yes, of course. You know, Jim, that sangria is, mm, sangria is made from sweet wine. So if you know sangria, probably you know the, the sweet wine, red sweet wine. So you know how to do, you know, like, or, or to find the one that I use. Wine is a spice. <laughs> if a policeman wants to punish you for driving drunk, you explain. Yes, exactly, darling. In Peru, Peru is, you know, a wonderful land. <laughs> I was, you know, just cooking, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, oh, Joe, I hope that everything was clear from, from the explanation. Um, so, uh, we're going to start preparing some things. Oh, let me just turn also again the, we have three more minutes to, to finally finish. But before, I want to do something more because we haven't finished. So I'm going to put this here. We're going to make closer the camera again. We are always moving from here to here in our shows. Okay, so we are not finished with the ingredients because there's one more ingredient we have to do, we have to add. And for that, first of all, we're going to add a little bit more of water because the next ingredient, we still are below the line of the pork. But the next ingredient is very important because... We are going to uh, make it much more thick and not liquidy, this carapul. This is a peanut, grounded peanut, okay? We're going to be adding about 100 grains of grounded peanut, which is half of my pot. In my pot, I have 200. I also bought this peanut in the morning from my vendor. Okay, that's 100 grains of grounded peanut. Okay. 
So my vendor knows every Peruvian dish. Like when you go to the vendors, especially the, the ones on the especeria stalls, you say, sir or lady, I am cooking today carapulcra. What do I need? Okay, lady, and they start putting everything in a little in little bags. You need to put this, 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 this. So this is also how we maintain the tradition. We're going to add also, this is a secret, amigos. This is a secret that just the grannies know. You know, I love to always ask grannies about how they cook. What is this? What do you think is this? Do you ever use tapioca? Which dish? Dolly, tapioca I think is yoka, no? Tapioca is yoka? Cassava? Manioc? Uh, so, yes, we do it. We do usually, Dolly, but for the sake of a good health and good waistline, <laughs> I will not be adding yoka. I will just add the rice. <laughs> Muy bien, Jim, chocolate, exacto, with chocolate, princesa. Princesa was the favorite chocolate of my grandmother. She loved, love, 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 love chocolate princesa. So we are using princesa for two reasons, because the secret of this dish to make it very, very flavorful is to add chocolate in it. Okay, um, we are going to add you know, like uh, these two pieces of chocolate. It can be, you know, one small chocolate bar of your preference. And this one has peanuts in it as well in the center. So it will go great. We're going to, mmm, delicious. It will go great. So this is the secret of the grannies to add chocolate in the flavor. Okay. But because we are adding chocolate, we have to add also a little bit of salt. I will correct the flavor of the salt now because probably it has lowered the flavor of the salt too much because I have added water. I have added, you know, uh, well, the, the different the wine that is sweet okay okay well i will check the flavor it's very hot be careful when you do this yeah we need to add more salt i think we're going to be adding maybe one spoon move hmm? so you have to be patient when you are cooking put your music on bring someone to talk with you know cooking is a pleasure i really don't cook much at home the person that cooks the most is my husband he cooks really well and i cook well in few occasions just when it's a special and that's why I cook for you, because you all are special to me. I do always the recipes of my grandmother when I cook also. I hope to honor her wish uh, to have this, uh, well, this cookbook and making this cookbook to be possible now. And give it to people that are really interested in knowing about the Peruvian traditional cuisine. Mmm. Mm, yum, 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 yum. So we're going to cover for a few minutes only. Oh, so now this will give me time to prepare our plate. Okay. So how are we doing today? Caitlin, thanks for your support. I'm here. Muchas gracias. It really helps me a lot. You have no idea how much it helps. Um, you know, these are free tours. We all tour guys in Hago do free tours because we know culture, first of all, should be shared like this. Like, you know, people have the right to, to, to travel the world and not spending thousands of dollars doing trips. 
but many of us are in the tourism industry. And of course, we are, we depend on tourism in person. So uh, virtual tourism has been a blessing for many of us. It helped us a lot also uh, to be helped with a, with a tip because it is not just coming to us. It also helps HeyGo uh, because HeyGo is a free platform. So all your tips are being split also with HeyGo and part goes to the guy, part goes to HeyGo. Also, remember that you can become my sponsor. You can sponsor most of your guys on HeyGo uh, just for $10 a month. Um, and uh, well, it's a way to help us to continue creating content, and especially, you know, um, well, um, you can also help the guys directly, not to continue being being there. So, in my rice cooker, let me check also this with you. In my rice cooker, you know, Peruvians love rice. Well, probably you don't know this, but Peruvians love rice. We love, 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 love rice. But this is the way how a rice is. Oh, gracias, Kaylin. Gracias. So the rice, the Peruvian rice, is very loose. Like every grain is separate. And it smells like heaven because it smells like um, a garlic. Well, garlic or eh, ajos in Spanish. So garlic, uh, eh, also we, we fry the garlic in oil, oil first. You can do that in your rice cooker. So you put the rice cooker has to be very dry, right? You heat up the rice cooker with nothing in. You put oil in the bottom. Uh, you heat up the oil. You put the um, garlic paste, one spoon of garlic paste, Fry it in that oil, and then you add the rice, you know, and you add the water. So that's how we do it. So this is my mold for making it look good for you all. This is my mold, rice mold. So this is the way how we like to present our rice in many houses. So in that way, you're going to have, you know, a nice presentation, impress everybody. So rice here huh Ta -da. so in this plate this here so it is ready by the way I'm going just to move around Ta -da. we're going to put now Oh, let me show you how it's in the in the pot. So in that way, you can do this at home properly. Uh huh? Okay. So look how it looks. How it looks. <laughs> um, so you have a creamy, creamy, you know, like a bottom part, but it's still the pieces of potato are visible, right? The uh, granite peanuts also give a very delicious taste and consistency. Mm -hmm. So, and the pieces of pork, you know, are ready. So now we're going to put in the plate our dish, okay? Huh? Let me just put the camera well. Like, honestly, guys, I have to buy a new gimbal, uh, no gimbal, a new tripod. <laughs> because it will cost me more if, if my... Uh, give me breaks. So I will put the pieces of pork first, okay? So this one is going to be served like for my husband, meaning that he lost a lot of pork. So I'm going to put this here. And then we are going to, then we're going to clean around the, the plate. No worries. Mm. And if you want, you can also put your uh, yoka around, no? So I am more like the type of person of, that doesn't really do decorations in the plate. <laughs> I'm more, I'm more the type that eats. 
Hola, Terry. Thanks for coming. Gracias. We are, you are ready to see the presentation, amiga. <laughs> we finished. Bravo. We made it. This is, wow, a very traditional Peruvian dish. Oh, Terry, yes. I will try, try it for you. What do you think? Do I taste it for you all, guys? Mm? So we're going to put this in the, in the table. Just give me a second. Give me a second. I will put it in the table. And I will taste it for you. So, <laughs> so well, here I am Rudolf, right? Rodolfo. <laughs> so um, today we prepare carapulcra. And don't worry if you were not able to come at the beginning of this tour or you missed part of the tour uh, because I will be uploading this event full on my YouTube channel so you can see it because I know many people need to take notes also to remember everything. So you're going to be able to see it there. How you can access to my YouTube channel is easy. In my channel of Hago, in the description of my channel, there is a list of links like my Facebook, my Instagram, Instagram and also my YouTube. So you can click there in my YouTube and you're going to see uh, my channel and you can also see all my cooking shows. Uh, once again, thank you so much for the people who were able to help me with a tip today. I really appreciate that a lot. It helps me really a lot. You have no idea. And also if to my sponsors, the ones who were able to come today, thanks a lot also for your support, your monthly support to become my sponsor or a sponsor to any any Hago channel, uh, you just have to compromise with a, a $10 monthly, uh, let's say, uh, investment. And every guy is giving something different to their sponsors. I am giving two books uh, uh, to my sponsors. If you're already my sponsor, please send me a message private so I can send you the links to my books. So it is time now to uh, see the final result. Yum, yum, yum. Look at this. I know that I am not the most perfect, you know, like a decor decorator of dishes, but this will taste really good. So we're going to prepare for your picture. If you want to do a picture like of my dish, remember that you are here uh, having lunch with me in Lima at home, at the home of Vanessa. And we're going also to give Yum, yum. With this rice, Peruvian rice, which is very well separate. It is not gluey. We don't like the gluey rice. Nothing wrong about it. It is just our tradition. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me just... Mm. Bien, Vanessa. Very good. <laughs> so um, let me also taste the, the pork. So, because the pork is also a very important part of this meal. Mm. It is delicious. Thanks a lot for coming to my channel today. Um, I hope to see you in my upcoming events next week. I will have in lots of events. I am having events about Christmas. So you are all invited to come to my house. Uh, we're going to talk about Christmas, how Christmas is celebrated in Peru. Uh, we're going to a market. We're going to see uh, uh, the Magic Water Show Christmas edition. So, and at the end of the year, we have a special tour to the market, uh, one of the locals market for a New Year's Eve. Uh, so it's going to be really, really interesting. Well, thanks a lot to the people who just came today for the first time to my event. I hope you enjoy it. It's been long, I know, but you know, cooking takes time because here you learn from beginning to end. There's no part to skip. Muchas gracias, Dolly. Gracias. Thanks for coming, Catherine. Muchas gracias. A pleasure to have you for the first time here and we'll uh, see you very, very soon. Best to you all. Enjoy. Have a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. Oh, love from Lima, Peru, from your friend, Vanessa. See you soon. Bye-bye.